Hi, and welcome to Answers News for April 30th, 2018, and you're finally back. I am. You know what? You're back? I'm getting bored with that. Hi. You're welcome to Answers News. It's Hi. the same. Then so you do it. You, you, do, you do the same Wait, every we time. We need something like, welcome to Answers News. It's okay. great to be live. You're a bit more creative than me. I yeah, guess. yeah. Right. Hey, buddy, you're coming unstuck. Am I coming unstuck? Do yeah. I sound funny? I guess we're right. glad to have him back. I'm I don't know. So, well, so actually, I was over in Washington, not Washington, D.C. Um, I was over in Washington uh, State. <laughs> and spoke at a homeschool conference, and there were 2,200 people there, including 10,000 kids. Does that make sense? No. Your it was math a homeschool is really conference. messed up. <laughs> it was a homeschool conference. Did you welcome our studio audience? <laughs> hey, you we welcome? have a studio audience. Oh, here yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you threw me off. That's why. <laughs> it's your fault. Okay, and today. There are two people from Kentucky, the state of Kentucky. And That's Indiana. That's absolutely, and, Indiana. and someone from Indiana. That's incredible because most people come from outside of Ohio, Indiana, and Kentucky. Anyway, while well, the notifications go out and people start getting online, and then I bring it up here on my iPhone, and so does Dr. Purdom. And then what we do is uh, we follow the comments and uh, also make some statements. Oh, there's a lot of people getting online already. Yeah. Tell us what country you're from. Hope there's some people from Australia. I got an Australian announcement today. Right, in a moment, Australian announcement. But some news items. Uh, first of all, just as we start here, did you know Thursday this week is the National Day of Prayer? Yep. yep. And by the way, this relates to another article we've got because when it's a National Day of Prayer, we pray to the God of the Bible. That's, <laughs> That's right. right. <laughs> we, we have an article today talking about what people in America think when they say they believe in God. Right. But mm -hmm. anyway, uh, good that's a, that's a really actually a good article. friend of mine, Dr. Ronnie Floyd, who's the president of the National Day of the Prayer Task Force, you know, he heads that up. He's actually senior pa pastor at Cross Church in Northwest Arkansas. And I've spoken at that church a couple of times. And uh, but Dr. Ronnie Floyd is heading this up. And so Thursday, we need to pray for our nation. This nation is in a mess. We need to pray for our whole Western world. We need to pray for the whole world. We do. Uh, but we certainly we, we need to pray. We should be that every day. We need to pray yeah. for our leaders in this nation. And we need to pray for Washington, D.C. in many ways. And the media. We need to be praying for the media. Yeah. Um, they need a touch from the Lord, actually. So I uh, thought I'd mention that on Thursday. You can mention that again Thursday, rather yes, than do answers news <laughs> uh, about National Day of Prayer. Also thought I'd mention to you that uh, Disney has made another big announcement. Um, they've now got um, Disney Mickey ears to celebrate Gay Pride Month. How about that? And unfortunately, Disney is re really, but really... But it isn't surprising. I mean, no. they have several shows now. One show, at least, has a gay character. And so they just... It just They've been promoting it. Yeah, so, so that's why I say to people, hey, you know, do you really want to spend thousands and thousands of dollars for your family to go to Disney? And, when... and they'll, they'll put this front and center, but then they'll have movies come out where they edit Christian themes and Christian characters and... And God out of things like that. Yeah, yeah they, they've done that a lot recently. You know, too. So if both. you come to the Ark and you come to the Creation Museum, they're a place. They have world-class attractions, every bit the quality, if not better, uh, than Disney and places like that. Family-friendly. And at the Ark, we have a program where we're taking back the rainbow. That's right. And we even so, have umbrellas here. Look at this. Me. Oh, there <laughs> it is. Look at that. Oh, and that shades me from the light. That's right. right. You know and what? it has Ark Encounter all over it. Yeah, it uh, does. Because did you know that God invented the rainbow? Because he's the creator. Mm -hmm. And God gave meaning to the rainbow in Genesis 9 after the flood when he said, uh, when you see the bow in the sky, you'll remember that God made a covenant between man and the animals and man, uh, God and the animals and God and man, I should say, that he would never again send another uh, global flood. Mm -hmm. Well, you so, know, those Mickey ears, they cost $17.99. <laughs> And this umbrella is only fourteen ninety nine. I'm well, telling you, this has, has well, better uses. Well, and what got training. me about this was, says we offer a wide range of merchandise items that appeal to guests of diverse backgrounds. I thought, what would happen if they had a set of Mickey ears with uh, the cross on them? Would There's they do that? Oh yeah, no they won't way. do that. Yeah. There's yeah. no way they would ever. They, they want to be inclusive, except anymore. for those Christians. Yeah. <laughs> well, the thing yeah. is, you know, we made a point at the Ark of saying, hey, the, the rainbow belongs to the Lord, and. Uh, God talked about the rainbow long before 
uh, the gay movement took up the rainbow. And they don't have all the colours of the rainbow, they only have six colours. Normally we have seven, mm -hmm. there's actually more colours than that. But, right. um, you know, we, we have uh, what's considered the main uh, rainbow. So, let's take back the rainbow. Well, maybe those Mickey ears are kind of like a subtle tribute to the Ark Encounter. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's not what they mean. But. I, I, I don't think that's what I mean. <laughs> hey, and then one more announcement before we really get underway, although we're well underway uh, today. There's somebody here telling us they got those shirts. By the way, somebody on here from Wales in the UK and um, uh, from California. Me? I'm coming to the Creation Museum in the Ark in just 16 days. There we are. Canada. Uh, and Canada. Uh, Spokane, Canadian Washington, I saw out here too. Bosnia. How about that? Someone from Bosnia, uh, Jacksonville, Alabama. Did you see uh, this? My son just got Diaz for a dinosaur for his birthday, and he says, "Thanks, Ken Ham, for such a great book." Oh yeah. Aww. South Africa, <laughs> Ecuador. Isn't it interesting to see people from all over the world uh, tune wonderful. in for answers news, and they come to our website? Come on, I haven't seen anyone from Australia yet. Someone from the Channel Islands. Look at that. And there's a group of homeschool kids watching Winchester, Kentucky. We've got someone from Kentucky on, on here. <laughs> and there's so many comments here right now. Hey, if anyone's from Australia, or if you know anyone from Australia, today we're sort of, in a way, officially announcing the launch of our Australian ministry, uh, Josh Williamson, mm -hmm. who's been an evangelist and, in Australia. And he, he's one of those people that's been out on the streets evangelizing. Yeah, and he came across so many people who mm -hmm. would be asking questions about right. evolution of millions of years. Yes. So he, has, he is really connected to yeah, understand. He's with us on multiple continents. Oh. He's a great guy. Oh, yeah. He's been yeah. in the UK yeah. and other places. Great love for the phenomenal Lord. speaker. Yeah. Absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal. speaker. Um, we must admit, of all the potential speakers we've ever yeah, heard, yeah, he he'd be one well. of the best, wouldn't he? he yeah. and, and we are very skeptical and very picky about, you know, who we allow to do this kind of thing, and he just really impressed us. And you know what? I mean, he did uh, Ken's Australian accent very well. <laughs> oh, wait, he's from Australia. So. <laughs> yeah, so he could copy It'd my accent. Better. Yeah, but, uh, and Josh loves apologetics. Yes, he And does. he was over here just recently, and we had him talk to our staff, and so many people commented to us what a dynamic speaker he was. Mm -hmm. And then my brother, uh, David, in Australia, mm -hmm. has a construction company and, you know, builds houses and, right. and townhouses and so on. And so what he did was at his office there, he threw his staff out of the lunchroom <laughs> and he put in an Nances <laughs> and Genesis bookstore instead. And we've even got a warehouse. That's our warehouse there <laughs> uh, in, in Australia. Oh, and uh, so... What you can do, if you actually go to the comment section, we're putting a page there where people can request an event because now Josh can speak. We've got our books in Australia. And we just started an office in Canada recently. We've got an office over the United Kingdom. We've got one in Peru. We've got one in Mexico, a yeah. uh, full-time uh, person we support in Mexico. So uh, Answers and Genesis has a number of offices around the world. And uh, some of them from New Zealand. Actually, Josh is doing Australia and New Zealand. And New Zealand so well, if you yeah. want to go to your find pinned at the top there where you can go and request uh, an event or you can contact Josh that way yeah. uh, through that link that's there. And somebody, somebody on here from Northern Ireland too. Uh, so Northern Ireland, Ireland, that's where my grandparents came from, Northern Ireland. And we have a conference in Ireland coming up later this year. In, in late October, early November, you, I and several other people yep. are going to be over there speaking. So you can so. get that on the yeah. Answers and Genesis Excellent. website, yeah. the information uh, about that. Somebody from South Africa watching uh, there as well. Somebody said, where is the Canadian office? They can find that information from our website. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. All right. From Fox News, Holy Grail of Guns Made. Company sells four and a half million dollar pistols made from four and a half billion year old meteorite. So, Cabot Guns is selling the most expensive guns ever made because they're made from a called the Gibeon meteorite that has a really cool like crystalline pattern, which I don't know if you can see it real well up there, but makes the guns look really neat. The only thing I thought when I read this article is they're getting gypped. <laughs> Whoever's paying four yeah. and a half million yeah. dollars for this. Yeah, they're ripped <laughs> off because number one, it's not 4.5 billion years old. Right. And, and you know, I was thinking, hey, if you really want uh, a gun made out of the oldest rock in the universe. Mm. Well, God made the earth before he made the sun, made moon the and stars. And 
When you go to the Grand Canyon, mm -hmm. you see where the you can actually see where the flood started because you see see the basement, see the basement rock, rock. Right. Right. which we call creation rock, mm -hmm. and then you see all the layers on top of that. So we should get a piece of that basement rock and say we can tell you the we we can tell you rock it's to three make days the real good out of it. <laughs> Yeah. Because, you know, uh, asteroids, meteorites, uh, the heavenly bodies, those types of things are all lumped under that word that we translate as stars, mm -hmm. which were created on the fourth day, and God made the stars also. And so, yeah, the and, Earth was three days is, older than any of this. And people may not realize it, but this is actually, this, this meteorite or other meteorites similar to it are used to date the age of the Earth. You realize it's not earth rocks that are actually used to determine the age of the earth. It's meteorites yeah, that supposedly side, fell yeah. to earth. What did, are you Did you doing? notice I moved closer to you? You're, you're yeah. staring me here. Okay. <laughs> so um, I'll tell you why. Because somebody said the red live button blocks Ken's face. And I know, <laughs> I know you probably did that that's, ahead of time. That's probably a good thing. <laughs> so I moved so over a bit. Anyways. <laughs> okay. Can you adjust the camera? So see, can you adjust the camera? Wrong presupposition. I can adjust. Right? The there camera's set. That's right. That's right. That's Sounds good. Right. All right, um, we think we're the, the first advanced earthlings, but how do we really know? Are they so, talking about the people before the flood? No. Oh. So they're well, talking about if there was a past civilization that was really advanced, like how would we know that? If they left no trace, like if they didn't use fossil fuels, if they didn't use certain things, how would we even know they existed? Well, can I read the, the introductory yeah. paragraph yeah, here? here? Absolutely. Here's so. what it says, and this is... Uh, from Science Daily, right? Yeah. Imagine if many millions of years ago dinosaurs drove cars through cities of mile high buildings. A preposterous idea, right? In a compelling thought experiment, scientists wonder how we would truly know if there were past civilizations. Wow, you know how what? How would a T Rex drive a car? Did you see those little arms? <laughs> I, yeah. I lay awake at night wondering what would have happened if dinosaurs had have evolved to drive cars. Uh, have you have you lain awake oh thinking about gosh. that night? No. Because you know this is published in the International Journal of Astrobiology. Okay. Do Which is the only biological <laughs> field I know of that has absolutely no evidence for its existence. I mean they're they're talking about again, they don't have Studying any evidence for past elsewhere. civilizations, yeah. right? I mean they continue to delve into a, a field. I don't know how they publish research papers with no evidence. You know, it's funny. Th this will make it into a scientific journal, but if you publish a exactly. paper that says, you know, mankind was a highly civilized organization before the flood of Noah's day, they'd laugh you out of the room. They would. Yeah. Yeah. Be besides which, I don't think, to me, you know, I think in the future, it's cats that are going to take over the world. <laughs> I do because oh, if you no, now you, all the cats no, you look at cats when they look here. at you, you know what they're thinking. You don't know, but we evolved to get you to serve us. Oh yeah, yeah that's what they're saying. Yeah. Well, this this is an actual like it's called the Silurian hypothesis that basically you define a civilization by its energy use. So if they use like a really clean form of energy, um, cleaner supposedly than what we use, then we could never. Um, detect them. And so... Like, like they use wind power and solar cells. And you know right? what that means? When they're looking for life in outer space, when right. they don't find any evidence for it, they can say, see, we told exactly. you it existed. Okay, now here's what's funny about this. The Silurian rock is actually in rock layers far mm -hmm. lower than the dinosaur rock layers. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting. They call this yeah. the Silurian hypothesis, and then they're talking about dinosaurs, which supposedly Thriving they cars. didn't exist within their timeline. Now here, I looked up something on the internet too. I typed in T-Rex driving a car uh, in cartoons. It's all over the place. So where are these guys getting this idea? Probably from kids' cartoons. Yeah. yeah I mean, probably. I hate to put it that way, hey, but... Somebody asked, are they fossil kind of fuels or God will already put them in the earth? One of the things that many people don't realize, even in fossil fuels, like um, in some of the coal deposits and things, they have found fossils of, right. of animals mm -hmm. and there was no death of animals until after sin right. so after you know and a lot of it's from the flood so. yeah most right. of most of your fossil fuels would say uh is from the flood of flood. noah's day hey yeah. somebody asked here how can they get books for, and they're in new zealand actually if you go to our answers in genesis.org website go up on the right hand side change countries to australia we yeah, have an right. australian website set up and you can order books and that's where australia and new zealand because we have right. our, all of our materials right. in australia right. now yeah. mm -hmm. You know, I, as I read through this article, I mean, yes, they're talking about thought experiment. They're, they're, they're making a lot of claims in here that just simply aren't true. But even their research wasn't so good. Let me read one of the lines. They're talking about uh, diff different ways that somebody might leave behind a geological footprint. They said, nuclear war, if it happened, would leave behind unusual radioactive isotopes. Now, 
there was a nuclear war. You know, in World War II, we dropped two nuclear bombs. Uh, since that time, we've had 520 atomic explosions in the atmosphere. There were eight underwater, and 1,350 of them have been detonated underground. We do have evidence of that. Do people find that sort of thing um, today, you know, as an example of advanced civilization? No, we hardly see any hints yeah. of any of that kind of stuff. Yeah. How do you know all that? Because he likes to look up. I'm a materials kind of guy. <laughs> and you're getting in trouble on Facebook now. Why is and that? And it says, watch it, Ken Ham. I'm a big cat lover. Uh -oh, See, I uh -oh. knew that was going to happen. It, if I'd have been on Noah's Ark, you wouldn't be a cat uh, lover because there'd be no cats. Yeah, I would have yeah, thrown yeah, them overboard. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, yeah, cats hate me. I wonder why. Okay. Um, mm. Well, that's because I hate like cats. Them. <laughs> okay. A uh, lab accident becomes mutant enzyme that devours plastic. Okay, that title is just like really weird, but anyways, the way they say it. But basically, um, there is a bacteria, um, Idionella, I think, this one's Idionella sacansins. Okay, we'll mm -hmm. just call it Idionella. You're a scientist, you've got to pronounce this. Come yeah, on, yeah, you're a geneticist. Yeah, I take Latin. So anyways, Idionella is a bacteria that they found... Um, basically, it's able to digest certain, they found it in the soil of a um, plastic bottle recycling facility in Japan. And so basically what has happened is this organism has adapted to its environment and, and with a gene that it already has, okay, that produces an enzyme, it basically got modifications in that, mutations that allowed it to break down plastic. Okay, because that's what bacteria do. They're master adapters. God's designed them to be able to do that. So yeah. it's not evolution. So what they're looking at is they're looking at plastics, PET, yeah. that's polyethylene. Uh, if you want the fancy name, it's uh, terephthalate. And what they would do is they would look at this, and apparently this bacteria, with utilizing this particular enzyme, could break down the bonds of this hydrocarbon. Plastics are hydrocarbons. Right. In fact, a lot of bacteria can break down hydrocarbons. Just when they're plastic, they're bonded in such a way that it's difficult for some mm -hmm. of these things to do it. So this apparently had the genetic information there. What it needed was a little boost. And so, uh, you know, with some mod modifications to the enzyme that yeah, it utilizes, they, mm -hmm. it actually breaks down that bond a little quicker. I, I think we need to also understand God had already created bacteria with incredible mm -hmm. diversity because um, we have a, an earth that has incredible diverse environments. And so they're able to survive in those right. diverse environments. And it's got nothing to do with evolution. It's not a, they call it like an evolutionary, you know, they will talk yeah. about it as being an evolutionary innovation. It's nothing of the sort because yeah. it already had that gene. And they don't know what the original function for that gene is. It may have been, they said, to um, break down a waxy coating on plants. Well, sure. I mean, that's entirely possible. And, it, yeah. and that's made up of different carbon and hydrogen bonds like plastic is. Yeah. So, um, and, and it's neat that they're able to modify this in such a way that it can break down plastic because that's a really good use because um, we do have a lot of plastic in our landfills mm -hmm. and things like that. So it's it's using these bacteria for it's good science, so to speak, yeah. but has nothing to do with evolution. It's not an I, innovation. Yeah, they want to attribute it to it. Yeah. yeah. Hey, somebody are. said here uh, tuning in from Bonnie, Scotland. I saw that. Hey, Bonnie did you know Scotland. how the Grand Canyon was formed? Someone told me in Scotland once when a Scotsman lost a penny down a gopher hole. <sighs> anyway, all right. Okay, moving on. <laughs> uh, first genetic evidence of ongoing mating between two distinct species of... Guinan. I should have looked up yeah. how to pronounce that. Guinan? Hey, th now this is amazing. All our studio Guinan. audience, you're going to be shocked like this, but they've actually found that monkeys can mate with monkeys. I, I know and you guys had, are shocked, aren't you? This is newsworthy right here. And we had an article on baleen whales last week that showed they can mate with each other as well, different mm -hmm. species. And that's what's interesting about this article is they're saying, well, right. species is supposedly, uh, you know, they can't reproduce with anything else. Well, right. but we're finding out that's just not That's true. right. The secular world, they try to define a species so that it can't breed with something else. Basically, you have this fixity of species. Now, it's interesting because they attack creationists for mm -hmm. saying... Fixity of species, and in older terminology, species meant kind, but that's been redefined over the years. So they're looking at a species and a species, and they interbreed with each other, and they're like, oh no, that's not supposed to happen. Yeah. To us, that's not a big deal, because they're all part of the same kind, kind. Uh, yeah. this particular well, kind. Well, the person who did this research said, I keep coming back to the idea that if they are only supposed to mate within their own kind, then why did these monkeys... <laughs> These uh, red tail monkeys mate with blue monkeys. Well, they are mating they with are. They're part of the those within their kind. And it is 
kind of interesting though. Like they didn't understand like, well, they look different. Um, mm -hmm. So why would they be mating? But they do. And sometimes we find that hybrids, which would be between two different species are actually hardier mm -hmm. and more fit than the individual species. We see this in Galapagos finches actually will do mm -hmm. this too. So well, you know, a good example are dogs. You know, think of a yeah. Great Dane and a Chihuahua. I mean, you're, you're not going to see any natural breeding between the two because of their physical characteristics, mm -hmm. but ultimately they can interbreed with each other. They're all part of the dog kind. The dog kind. Right. Actually, a number of uh, our studio audience have already been to the Ark. How many of you are going to the Ark tomorrow? Uh, a number of you are going tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So on the second deck, we have uh, uh, an exhibits there dealing with the issue of kinds and helping people understand. Actually, the Hebrew word... Uh, for kind, is kind or it's translated kind uh, in Genesis is the Hebrew word mean mm -hmm. and I, so yeah. what does mean mean you like that that's pretty yeah, good yeah, what does mean so mean? what does mean mean uh, actually we would say kind is more at the family level right. of classification not species not genus mostly family mm -hmm. so there's not the dog instance, there's the dog the family mm -hmm. in lots of different dog species there's the monkey family. Yeah. Yeah. And there might be several of those, but yeah, there could, there could be more. Right. Yeah, there's the monkey kind. Mm -hmm. You can have lots of different species that yeah. could interbreed with mm -hmm. each right. other. We is have the horse kind. The ape kind. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of different yeah. sorts of apes. Yeah. Yeah. There's a cat um, kind. Cat, well, I know which, you which, don't like that, but which there's means, a cat kind. Which means two of each kind, seven pairs mm -hmm. of some, but two of each kind went right. on board right. Noah's Ark, so far fewer animals on the Ark than what, right. this, uh, what people claim when they say, what? oh, it couldn't have happened. On our website, we talk a lot about kinds. We have stuff in a number of our books. But I wanted to point out a kid's book. And we sell this at the Ark Encounter. It's called How Many Animals Were on the Ark? And it's Understanding the Animal Kinds. Uh, because, y you know, we're in a culture where people sometimes don't always get it. You know, you have a dog kind, a cat kind, an elephant kind. Mm -hmm. A good rule of thumb is if they can breed together, they're part of the same kind. So let me test our audience out here. Dogs breed with dogs and you get dogs. Yeah, cats breed with cats and you get I mean, this there is you a, have it. This is one of they our, this is incredible <laughs> intelligent audience. But, uh, um, I, I'm just amazed. Somebody uh, asked right here about if, if different, book, can hybrid animals typically breed or are they sterile? It just depends. Sometimes right. they can, sometimes they can't. Right. So we don't, we don't know. But that doesn't mean they're not still members of the same kind. Right. So as long as they, two members can come together and produce, an off, produce offspring, then we would consider them members of the same kind. Actually, somebody yeah. said here, if I was Noah's wife, I would have asked him to ask God to eliminate ticks during the flood. Actually, probably ticks weren't even on the ark. They didn't need to be. We don't think, it, it, it was the land dwelling, everything animals right. were on the ark. Insects would have survived outside in larval form, pupil right. form. I'm sure there were and some insects on, on the ark just because there were lots right. of animals, but not by their yeah, kind necessarily. Right. See, I would have got rid of the mosquitoes if I had the chance. Those mozzies. Uh. That's what they call them in Australia. <laughs> they, they just shorten everything over there. What's football? Footy? Yeah, yeah, what are yeah. mosquitoes? Mozzies? I know, I know, I know. Yeah. whole language I do not know. <laughs> All right. That's right. A mysterious new form of DNA was just discovered in human cells. So I love this. I'm geeking out about this because I'm the geneticist. So, um, so DNA basically can form, you, we think of the twisted double helix, but can actually form a knot, basically, that's more like well, that's two helixes right. together. It's called an eye motif. Um, and they believe it's involved in the regulation of genes and how they're basically transcribed mm -hmm. from DNA to RNA, which eventually leads to proteins. And so it just shows that the more we know, the more we know we need to know. <laughs> the more we know that we don't know. Yeah. Um, no matter how much you know, there's an infinite amount more to know, oh, which means no matter how much yeah. you know, you don't know how much more there is to know anyway, exactly. which means no matter how much you know, you don't know how much you do know or don't know in relation mm -hmm. to whatever there is to know, whatever <laughs> that is, which means we don't know much. Is that right? When it comes to DNA, I would say yeah. absolutely, because it's just so stinking complex. <laughs> what, they, what they're saying here, there's so much of the genome we don't understand, probably like 99% of it. <laughs> yep. And I think this is real important to, for, for people to really grasp hold of the fact that we think we know a lot and scientists think they know a lot, but when you start delving into the complexities yeah. of life, it is so much more complex and levels of complexity and, and you, you just stand in awe at the design and complexity, and yet they say that it will happen by chance random processes. No. It's utter nonsense. Yeah. No wonder Romans 1 says, if you don't believe in God, you're without excuse. Yeah. Actually, what these people should do is these scientists look at this and realize, and, they, and they're just 
absolutely amazed at the complexity. You know what they should be standing back and doing? Giving glory to God. That's right. Instead, That's they right. try to say, well, how could this come about by chance, random processes? Well, you know? and it shows, yeah. too, that you can't just get mutations. You know, evolutionists believe in random mutation. That's what leads to every living thing that we see today. But if these sequences in the DNA are more than just genes, they're, I mean, it, regu it regulates this literal three-dimensional form that DNA takes on, which has to do with regulations. So you can't just go making mutations everywhere because you're probably messing up a lot yeah, of things. Yeah, you, you mess up stuff. You lose a lot of information. Hey, hey somebody said yeah. here, speaking of kinds and cats, maybe Ken should be kind to cats. Aww. Aww. Somebody said, now you, we have to put up with Ken being mean about cats and mean to Dr. No, Turtle. Notice, nobody was defending you, those mosquitoes out You know there. those domestic cats that we have in our homes? You know what the correct definition of them is? They're sin-cursed, degenerate, mutated copies of the original cat that God made. Okay. That's nice. That's what they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know there's no okay. sin in heaven, so there's going to be no cats in heaven. <laughs> so there we are. We've Thanks solved that problem. Thanks for that theological, you know, <laughs> lesson there. All right. State comes out with new LGBTQ curriculum. So basically, um, this, is in, uh, this is in Massachusetts. And so uh, they're basically trying to design lessons and lesson plans to be more inclusive of um, LGBTQ, even though only 11% of Massachusetts high school students identify as LGBTQ. So definitely um, wanting well, to... It's hard to believe well, that young well, here's kids the thing. at that they, age are they say, in such a fashion. They say that uh, they want to be able to have this new curriculum with LGBT-themed history, English, and health by this fall in an effort to help all students see themselves reflected in the classrooms. Wait a minute, Do you know they go on to say the number that claim to be LGBT is about 11%. Mm -hmm. So they, they're changing the whole curriculum so everyone can look at it from an LGBT perspective so that 11% of students see themselves reflected. But what it's doing is forcing the LGBT philosophy onto the other students. Yeah, the other 89%. 89%. <laughs> And they're saying, yeah, we just want to make sure that the kids feel safe. Well, does that make the other 89% you know, feel safe about that? It having their religion attacked? Mm -mm. And well, having, having a false worldview imposed upon them? I it, wouldn't feel safe. And, and listen to this comment. I would like to see more discussion of LGBT issues in the curriculum. I don't think there's enough yet. It's really up to the classroom teachers to normalize being LGBTQ yeah. in the curriculum. What they're trying to do is normalize, normalize sin. It. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's really what they're doing. And they're trying to force it on all the other students. And you know, this is a warning for Australia, because in Australia, they've got this program called, uh, you know, uh, what do they call it, SAFE? Um, mm -hmm. uh, We've reported on it before. I remember the safe, discussing it a few times. Safe sex programs or whatever it is mm -hmm. uh, in schools. But this is what this is all a part of. This is yeah. what it's going to be. It's not just, it's, it's, it's really about forcing LGBT well, and normalizing. On normalizing, they use that word over and over again in here. Mm -hmm. That's the key. They're really trying to make it just be like, this is what people do. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things it says in here is Boston high schools will be among the first to use the curriculum and have already begun training teachers on how to support students who are coming out. Now, do they train the teachers on how to work with the students who are coming out of the LGBTQ No, movement? they only want it no. to go one way. They only want it to go one way. Yeah. In fact, if someone wants to change from, from their, their gender from male that they were born with to female like, you know, or something like that, uh, or they w want to change from being heterosexual to gay or, or whatever, then they will, they will applaud that. But if somebody wants to change the other way around back to what we would say is mm -hmm. way God created us, um, they're against that. Yeah. Right. It, it, oh, yeah. it all goes one way. By the way, this is called the Safe Schools Program. Oh, yeah. And they have it, that in Australia. And they say, oh, no, it's, it's not trying to force our views on it's others. It's anti-bullying. So. That's well, what it usually comes under. Well, that, and, and they say in here, the issue of bullying, bias, and discrimination, that's still a huge problem. Do they realize that they're bullying, being biased, and discriminating yeah. against Christian kids in there? Yeah. Yeah. It goes so really what, what, about it, what about if they had Christ, Christian. what about if they had Christian programs mm -hmm. written yeah. from a Christian perspective in history yeah. and English and math, so right. that kids who are Christians can reflect on that's that? That's right. They can be safe and identify yeah. properly. Will they do that? No. no and that's that had work. a huge impact on the world, much much larger than the LGBTQ mm -hmm. history and all of that. So that would make sense if they did that, mm -hmm. but not. 
stuff. Now, this is interesting because people say, oh, well, that's Massachusetts and that's just one, one place and so on. But then the next article we yeah. have. School yeah. district forbids parents from opting kids out of LGBT lessons. This is on the other coast. This is in California, in Orange County, where uh, parents may not opt their children out of lessons related to gender identity or sexual orientation. Now, they say, now parents are free to advise their children that they disagree with this. But, you know, oh, how nice of them yeah, right? I mean, to it, give them permission to The school to do has that. to give permission to the parents to talk Good to their point. kids. Yeah. But they are going to impose this religion. I want people to understand it's a religion. It's the religion of yeah. secular humanism, and as a subset, it is sexual humanism. That's what the kids are being taught. The state is imposing that established a religion upon those kids. Yeah. Well, and you, you know, Todd Starnes wrote on this, from, and he's often on uh, Fox News, yep. and he said, Allow me to be blunt. The idea that parents do not have the constitutional right to determine what is best for their ch a child is downright evil. Yes, mm -hmm. evil. Mm -hmm. Hey, if you want to see what's happening as a result of all this, you know, I was just over in Washington State mm -hmm. and uh, went to Portland uh, for um, uh, s Saturday night, actually, was in Portland and, and spoke there to some of our supporters. We're down the center of the city and there are... Uh, there, uh, uh, people soliciting for prostitution and brothels and you could smell the marijuana in the streets and there were homeless yeah. people all over the place mm -hmm. and people who are urinating in the streets. This is in a city in, in America. I mean, I, hey, I was shocked. Hey, when you get rid of the absolute authority of the Word of God, why be clean? Why take yeah. care of your body? You know, why, why care about others? I mean, right. you, you see, when you give up the absolute authority of the Word of God, anything goes. And that's what you're starting to see. And, and if we want to really see the result of what's happening with the, you know, forcing the LGBT uh, the philosophy on people and also opening up to saying, hey, you should be allowed to use whatever drugs you want, wherever you are, you start to just, see what's happening in these cities. It's downright evil. It's becoming more like, I, I suspect, it in the direction of Sodom and Gomorrah oh, yeah. and Places and like and that. parents really need to be, like I'm saying, watching this and being proactive. No matter how you choose to educate your child, know what they're learning in the classroom. Mm -hmm. Know what the curriculum is teaching because you need to be proactively teaching them the Word of God and why those things are wrong or right, whatever is being mm -hmm. taught. So. Yeah, Ephesians 6.4 says, bring up children in the discipline and the instruction of the Lord. And you know, another one I know I've used this and talked before as well is Proverbs 22.6. Train a child in the way that he should go. When he's old, he will not turn from it. And uh, You know, it, it's interesting. I mean, I've been out speaking a lot lately, and uh, I said I was just speaking over in the West Coast, and I'm uh, going to Texas actually next week and speaking at a big homeschool conference there in Arlington, Texas. But, you know, the, the, there are parents coming to me, and they're saying, why is America going the way it is? Why is the whole Western world changing? We've got an exodus from the church of young people. They're becoming more secularized. The whole gay marriage stuff, the abortion stuff. It's very simple. It's a battle that started back in Genesis. God said, obey me, don't eat the fruit of the tree. And the devil said, did God really say you can become like God? It's a battle that started there between God's word and man's word. It's a battle all the way through scripture, light and darkness. Build your house on the rock, build your house on the sand. Good and evil, for Christ, against. I mean, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, the tree of life. It's a battle all the way through scripture. Here's the bottom line. When you raise up generations in this culture and tell them the Bible's not true, man yeah. determines truth, ultimately anything goes. And that's like the book of Judges. When they had no king, everyone tells them what is right in there, does what is right in their oh, own nice. eyes. That's what's happening to America. And the church needs to wake up to it and train up generations mm -hmm. to stand on the word of God. Yep. Yep. All right, well, we are out of time oh, for today, time. so we will cover anything we didn't cover. We'll cover that on Thursday at 2 oh, wow. o'clock, and so we'll see you then. All right, God bless you guys.